Good morning, traders. Today is November 6th, Sunday. It's early in the morning. We've had a time change, and we're going to go over the custom index charts today. We're going to start with this custom U.S. to global market index chart to highlight the strength in the U.S. markets over the last week, week and a half here. This is a weekly chart. You can see we've rebounded off of this uh, these deep lows down here back down near my COVID support area. Um, we've seen a nice solid rebound. Foreign markets have started to move a little bit higher. This is kind of what I talked about over the last couple of weeks. We've seen um, support in the global markets start to pick up. Foreign currencies, foreign assets are starting to potentially form a little bottom back down here near these lows. You can see back over here. And what we're looking at right now is a moderately strong basing pattern. We still don't have any upward movement yet, meaning confirmation of an upward trend, but we're not seeing that big breakdown. We're not seeing it move lower. Now, we could still see it break down lower here and see a, a bigger collapse, but moving into Q4 of 2022, which we're already uh, saw a month or so into it, uh, and moving into Q1 2023, uh, I believe that the unwinding cycle phase is already fairly well complete. Understand that we're back down here to 2016, uh, 2000, uh, early 17 levels for the global markets. And we've already seen the U.S. markets um, pull back from a massive rally phase here upwards of close to 99% from 2017, we've already seen it pull back um, close to 60% here. You can see from 99 down here, close to 42, 43. Uh, that's about a, uh, uh, again, uh, about a 60% collapse in the global markets. That equals on a Fibonacci scale, roughly uh, 0.618 collapse. You've seen the same thing happen over here, gone from about 62% down here to minus uh, 4, uh, 3%, uh, 3 or 4%. So that's going to, again, equate to about a, a, a massive collapse here uh, on a percentage basis. Uh, it's, gonna, it's basically going to be a 0.618, a little over 0.618 level. Um, and I believe we're still trying to hold a bottom here. We'll see how it plays out. Now, what we're going to do now is move to the custom U.S. valuation trend index. We are seeing um, some extended deepening of a trend here. We are holding up near support. Um, this is a critical support level. Remember, this goes all the way back to these levels here. We could ultimately see this move down to these levels, 2018 lows. Um, but understand that we are holding up near these support levels. We are looking for signs of support right now. Obviously, we're in a downtrend. So we're not trying to, to guess that the market is going to move higher here. That's not our job. That's not the intent of what I'm trying to teach you right now. I am looking for a wave for bottom. I am looking for a base to set up. I believe we're very close to a base uh, in the market, but we are still in a downtrend. The Fed just raised rates. And we don't have any real indication of an upward trend cycle yet. Now, let's move over here to the uh, custom U.S. cash flow index. This is something that is new. I wanted to highlight this for you. Uh, this is a weekly chart. You can see from 2000, June 2020, we entered this nice, strong bullish phase. Then in June 2021, we entered this downward cycle trend and have been in this trend for quite a while. And now we're starting to see some real basing here. So from a from a standpoint, when we look at the, the other charts that are showing downward cycle trends, you can see that this cash flow index is indicating that quite a bit of money is moving into the U.S. assets right now. We'll see how this holds up and if we get any real follow through of this uptrend. We've got deep, deep basing. You can see we actually have divergence across here and divergence across here with this deep low. We may end up seeing this become a very strong base like I've been telling uh, everyone for the last couple of weeks. Now, remember, the June lows, which were back over here, actually probably marked right here, were initially uh, what I thought was going to be the bottom. But as you can see, the cash flow system with the Fed and the rolling around, we've seen a new deeper low we are back into the COVID lows area. 
uh, based on this chart, whereas based on this previous chart, we are not into the COVID lows area. So this is telling you that the unwinding cycle phase has taken quite a bit away from this market from 1.90 up here down to approximately 1.0. This has essentially been a full, uh, literally a full, uh, well, actually you'd have to take it from here, lows to highs. This has been roughly a 0.618 contraction again in the market and we'll see if this holds up. If these lows hold over the next couple of weeks and we move into an upward trend, we'll get this to change over into a green super trend trend and it'll start to move higher back up, up or upward again. All right, the well, let's go back over here and just start from the beginning. So here we have the consumer engagement index. Consumers are pulling away. This is not, uh, not uh, unexpected right now. Fed raised rates. We're seeing rates move uh, higher. Consumers are pulling away. News is that uh, um, we're seeing a large number of defaults in the auto market, probably gonna happen in the credit card market and probably going to extend into the housing market over the next uh, four to six months. So understand it's very similar to 2008, what happened when we started seeing rates come up and adjustable rate mortgage shoot, uh, mortgages shoot up to eight, nine percent. Um, we're getting to that point again where consumers are starting to feel the pain of inflation, uh, higher borrowing costs, um, and it was just too easy for too long at lower interest rates. But then again, remember, you know, we're, we're looking at these highs and lows. We are now down at the lowest levels that we've seen back here, 2012 and 13. We had been down at these levels just a few weeks ago or months ago. These are monthly bars. So understand that this, this likely may come back down and test this lower level as consumers pull away, but we may end up seeing some sort of support moving into this market trend, especially if uh, elections change consumer sentiment uh, and if we start to see some decreasing in inflation and jobs. So now the uh, U.S. large cap index is broken downward again. We're in these cycle phases here. Uh, we're, we're nearing the mid end point of this cycle phase. Typically in a down cycle, you can see here, are these I've marked these down cycles. We get a bit of sideways activity, sometimes some extended downward activity. This is quite a bit of extended downward activity and we have pretty much until, uh, uh, until June, I'd say May, June, July of 2023 before this downward activity may end. Large cap stocks are a, a, a specific segment of the market. It's not the entire market. It's telling us that large cap index stocks are not seeing uh, tremendous cash flow and accumulation. They are basically waning sideways after this big strong rally phase. Eventually we'll get a bottom here and eventually we'll find some opportunity here, but large caps continue to move downward continue to trend sideways, and this is more of an unwinding of capital uh, that's literally pulling away from the market, not wanting to get trapped in uh, what might, might become a broader deflationary cycle. The global asset index, this is a measure of uh, global activity, including U.S. and global markets. You can see that we've broken through this downtrend. We're moving down into these lower channels. We have a little gap right here, which I'll have to highlight in the next chart, which may end up being support. But below this, ladies and gentlemen, we're seeing the custom global asset index continue to weaken. And this is going to continue to be this way until we find some sort of a bottom. This is telling us that we are not seeing any real accumulation in the U.S. or global market assets yet. Uh, that's why we've got to be very cautious. We are in a downtrend. We have not exited a downtrend yet. Um, I am looking for a bottom to set up. We're not seeing broad market selling, but my custom indexes here are telling us that generally we're seeing distribution. We're seeing money moving away from global assets, away from certain U.S. assets, and moving into the safety of the U.S. dollar and metals and, and a few other sectors. So now we come over here to the metal cycle index. Metal cycle index is basing and bottoming, uh, which is fantastic. This is what we want. Eventually, we're going to see this start to move higher. 
Um, this will start to move higher as gold begins to accelerate into a parabolic curve. This will be very late in the stage. This basing pattern here tells us that gold is starting to accumulate. It's starting to base. It's starting to bottom and should start to move quite a bit higher as long as we don't see this move downward or upward excessively. We want it to stay in this basing pattern, kind of like we saw, remember, 2014-15 we saw kind of an unwinding, and then we saw base gold begin to base in this area. In 2019-20, we saw it start to really rally, okay? And that was this phase here. Then we've gone down into this basing pattern. Understand that when it stays in this basing pattern and fails to weaken, fails to strengthen, it's going to shift from distribution, uh, meaning uh, lack of demand in gold, which I really don't, uh, don't want to say it that way. Consider it as... Um, unimpressive demand in gold, uh, gold accumulation to more uh, uh, impressive gold accumulation. And that's where I believe we've transitioned. I'll show you that here in a minute. The custom check ratio index has gotten down below these 2015 lows. Kind of, kind of scary in a sense, but understand that we come right back down to these lows right over here. We're very close to these levels right now. Um, these would put us in the 2011, 12, 13 lows. Um, and we are kind of at that area. You can see right here, the old dash line is very close to the 2013 lows. We have just a little bit to go before we end up in the 2012 lows. Technology is still weaker, ladies and gentlemen. Hasn't really bounced like I thought it would off of this level. Um, but it is getting very, very oversold. And I will show you this as we move forward. So right now, technology does not look like it's going to bounce, um, uh, you know, right away. Um, we could see a surprise trend here into the end of the year and going into Q1 2023, but still downward trending. And remember, we've wiped out all of the gains from 2013, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Every single year, we've wiped out more than, let me do the math here, more than 22, or sorry, 12 years of gains in technology um, based on this custom uh, index tech ratio chart. Uh, and we're now back down here to 2010, 11, 12 levels. Um, this is a very solid, uh, extreme oversold scenario. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we see some real big bounce off of this level and some accumulation, depending on what the markets see and how well the U.S. dollar is holding up. Uh, okay, we've looked at that chart. We've looked at that chart. We've looked at that chart. Now we go to the volume ratio index. We had a little bit of accumulation last week. We haven't seen any big change of trend here. We've seen some weakening. Uh, we did see some accumulation early on. This is in June and July when everyone thought the bottom was in. Uh, we may see another bounce here this coming week, depending on what happens with news, depending on what happens with uh, uh, the elections. We could have a resurgence of enthusiasm in the market, particularly after the elections this coming week. Uh, but we need to be cautious and just kind of wait it out still. The uh, commodity to gold index flattened back out. Again, this is a great uh, bottoming formation here. We're getting back down into this kind of an area here where it's kind of moved upward but stalled out. Um, we need to see how it plays out. More than likely, in my opinion, we're going to see this kind of stall out. I don't believe there's going to be a huge commodity uh, the rush into gold and or, or, uh, uh, kind of another phase of a commodity rally here. You know, it, it could happen and if there's some supply side disruption, but uh, demand has really been uh, been beaten down. Consumer demand is just not there right now. Housing and uh, and new cars and new construction and new appliances. It's not the same market that it was back here in 2020, 21. Uh, it's more than likely going to phase out here into 2023, staying below this 2.0, 2.2 level, kind of in a, let's call it a, a, a 0 0.9, 0 0.8 level to 2.2 level, just kind of staying down here in this uh in this under impressive flattening mode uh, before we start to see any real demand cycle kick in. But this is very good. It tells us that 
Um, inflationary pressures are weakening. Uh, commodity price uh, levels should be weakening as well. Demand for commodities is weakening. And gold is starting to potentially base and bottom for a new move higher, which would be an indication that fear is kicking into high gear. Okay, the FANGS index. Okay, very important that you understand this low last week aligns with this low and aligns with this low. We have reached that, that uh, 1.5 standard deviation uh, breakdown. We could move lower. Okay, this was a big kind of a downward trend in technology, and we could see it move quite a bit lower. We are at COVID high levels. Te uh, technically, remember back here, where am I going? Right here, we are at 2011 levels. Based on the FANGS index chart, we are at 2020 uh, high levels. So we would technically be right around this area. So we've seen extreme oversold conditions in the custom tech ratio index, indicating that technology has moved uh, uh, 25, 35% below hypothetical support levels here from 20, um, uh, late 2019, early 2020. Whereas in this chart, we are seeing technology has moved down below the COVID high levels it's looking for support right now. It's 1.5 standard de or one uh, yeah 1.5 standard deviations outside of the uh, normal channel range here. This is getting into extreme overbought on this Fangs index, uh, and I would not be surprised to see it rally back up into this middle area trying to find support, kind of like we had right here off of this bounce here. Extreme bottoming, rallying back up into this middle level and trying to resume this channel. So we are now at a, an extreme oversold condition for technology. Uh, we have to be very, very cautious right now. We could move into a bigger breakdown, which would be unprecedented over the last uh, four or five years here on this chart. Um, and that would push us back down into these areas. But we also have the potential that FANGs have reached an extreme low they're looking to bottom and we could see a shift. This could be a very big shift in the market setting up over the next couple of weeks going into 2023. The uh, metals index has formed a beautiful triple bottom over here. Remember, I was indicating how strong metals were. And I want you to understand that if the crap hits the fan over the next couple of months uh, or years, uh, which was very likely with regards to fear and credit contraction and defaults and things of this nature, we are going to see metals move into a tremendous uh, rally phase, possibly three, four, five hundred percent from current levels. So understand that you know you have to take a look here. Let's call it 400 or 380. Um, if we were to go up 400 percent, we would be looking at 1600 on this chart. Um, from where we're at right now, maybe a bit higher. And that's why we need to be very cautious of the extended selling pressure here and look at metals as a long-term play. When I'm telling you to hold on to metals, I'm telling you to hold on to a diversified portfolio of metals, stocks, miners, stocks, um, even into copper and lithium and uh, um, you know, battery stocks, raw basic materials, raw materials, um, miners and suppliers. The reason being is we could see a big rally in platinum, palladium, gold, silver, and various other commodities that become essential for uh, manufacturing and production. Particularly platinum and palladium are used in a lot of medical device manufacturing and aerospace manufacturing. Silver and gold are used in almost all forms of electronics manufacturing and others. We're getting a very solid basing bottoming pattern here. We've seen gold move up Friday a tremendous amount. We do not have any real indication of a bottom base yet. Like I said, we're looking for it. We want to stay properly hedged. We are in this broad upward trending phase, but we need to see metals really shift direction here to begin to, to call it an uptrend. We are not in an uptrend. We've broken away from this uptrend here. We've moved many, many uh, weeks into a downtrend here. 
Um, we're looking like we're attempting to bottom with this triple bottom right here, and we'll see how it holds up. We almost need to see this chart move back up above 420, uh, 418, kind of in this area, to say that, okay, now we're in somewhat of a confirmed uptrend. I mean, ideally, this high right here would be the first target to get above. That's about 390, but in reality, we need to see some real momentum to the upside to call it an uptrend. Okay, the Smart Cash Global Index. You can see this is the Global Index. It's really hammering out a good bottom here. I have a couple of small bars with a gap. We're starting to see some upward momentum here. You can see we've got a, a lower low here, which is not and does not create technical divergence. Same thing here, lower low, no technical divergence. Globally, the global markets are already back into COVID lows. Okay, so this is an extreme selling of the global markets indicating that we are now at a price point which indicates a a com almost a complete global shutdown um so a very broad disruption uh, at this point like i said i'm looking to see some sort of a basing bottoming formation i really believe capital is starting to shift away from the fed indicate the fed indicated that they're going to have to continue to try to raise rates to break inflation i think inflation is already weakening in fact, I'm pretty damn sure of it based on my uh, analysis of the real estate market and some of the other global markets. I believe they've already broken the back of inflation. We're just not seeing the numbers uh, report through government data. Uh, and consumers are actually quite healthy in the upper level, mid and upper level consumers. They're actually quite healthy, sitting on quite a bit of cash. It's the lower end consumers that are going to feel a lot of this pain. Um, but the a reversion trade in this market uh, in in some sort of an early 2023 or Christmas rally type uh, reversion cycle trade would put a reversion move up into this 160, 165, 170 area. And from where we're at at, at call it 121, that would be about a 40 or 50 percent reversion to the upside move back into these pre COVID levels over here. Uh, and that's what I believe is actually going to happen. I believe we're going to see some sort of a move over the next 12, 15 months, which is going to be more of a reversion trade. It's not going to be a straight up through the roof rally. It's going to be a reversion first, showing that we've moved away from these extreme lows. And then we're going to look for new direction. And, and I think it may continue to move higher, particularly if global central banks move to a, you know, a, a moderate neutral stage. So, Hypothetically, the Fed has raised rates from near zero to, you know, I think it's like four and a quarter, four and a half right now. Um, but understand that the Fed, if it moved it to five uh, and then stalled or moved it from there back down to four and a half or four and a quarter, um, at that point, we're in kind of a neutral rate. And if the, if the Feds, the central banks just paused their aggressive activity and let the markets settle, it will unwind risk within a 12 to 18 month period uh, and the global markets will settle re-establish some new base and attempt to move into a new trend which i believe that's kind of what's going to happen over the next 12 to 18 months is that everybody's going to pause nobody wants to blow a hole in the bottom of the boat hopefully um, and the next phase here after all of this unwinding is a bit of a reversion, a 20, 25, 30, 35 percent reversion trade back to the upside, looking for some real support. OK, U.S. stock market index. What? Oh, this is an older one. OK, uh, November 5th, the valuations index is stalling out. Again, very low basing level. We're not seeing a lot of selling. We're not seeing a lot of accumulation. We are very deeply to the downside here. We'll have to see how this plays out going forward. Um, valuations would likely move a bit higher if we were to see some sort of a reversion trade, not excessively higher, more so closer towards this 61, 62, $63 area or point area right in here, this pinkish red line. Uh, and that's something we're kind of watching for. Generally, you can see we've unwound from these extreme highs all the way down. So we were up in, in the 300 range and now we're down at 46. We've unwound close to 90% of this extreme buying excessive speculative phase. And of course, one of my favorite indexes here, the volatility index. 
moved off of these lows, just like I predicted, moving back up towards the highs, showing some moderate strength here, not showing any real strong word upward trending. It's at 7.96. 7.96 in my mind is moderately neutral. Because it's been moving higher off the 6.0 level, I would give it a, a slight bias towards bullish trending, trying to establish a base but not necessarily up here in this 10, 11, 12 area, which would be needed for upward trending. What I would be looking for in this index here is failure to really break downward. You see how we've been getting into this six area and stalling, getting into the six area and stalling, getting into the six area and stalling. We're in this tight channel, this purple line, this red line, and then of course we have this blue line indicating an upward channel cycle. We've broken the upward channel cycle. We've moved into this downward cycle trend. We've been staying in this upward trend. We've actually moved away from this standard deviation channel holding support right here, which is what happens. The markets are failing to move downward very aggressively after the June lows. We just had a deep, a little bit deeper low. And now we've rolled back up out of it. These, these are typically, this 6.0 level is typically a bottom basing area in normal market type of activity. So this is like an extreme oversold condition where if we got even lower, this would be a deeper downside move into a, a, a very extreme like the COVID collapse. But we haven't seen that yet with the US market. What we're seeing is a little bit of support coming in, little bit of upward bias trending, little bit of accumulation. And I believe this could turn into a kind of a moderate Christmas rally into a Q1 possible Q2 uh, reversion trade, maybe putting us back up here into this 12, 13 area, and maybe trying to set up some sort of an upward trend. But we just have to wait and see, ladies and gentlemen. We are seeing upward trending. We are seeing upward bias, but we're not seeing any real big accumulation of stocks yet, which is why, as I mentioned to you back over here with the U.S. Devaluations Index, we're seeing this deepening bottom, this double bottom near this 1.5. We're also seeing here these deep lows a couple weeks back that created kind of a double bottoming formation. These are closes actually, and now we're up above these levels. So what we're kind of looking for here, ladies and gentlemen, is these, as, as assets have rushed into U.S. markets and the U.S. dollar because of strength, the U.S. dollar will probably continue to stay up above the 108, 107 level, maybe 106 on a low side. We'll see some unwinding of commodity demand. Um, we'll see the Fed start to telegraph that they are likely going to start shifting into a lower rate increase, which they've already done in 2023. Um, we'll likely see global central banks start to move in a favor to try to stabilize the unwinding that's taking place. They're already at COVID lows. Now we're looking for that reversion trade. We're looking for that move back up here in the global markets and back up into here for the U.S. markets, kind of that moderate Christmas rally taking place. And that's going to put us into a scenario where we could see a 25, 30, 35 percent rally or a bit more looking for some support going into Q1 2023 and Q2 2023. So really, we're holding up. We're in a downtrend. We're kind of near a washout low. Indicators look very ugly and biased, like I mentioned over here. These look really quite ugly to the downside. You know, and technically you say this is, well, it's a new low, Brad. It's a new closing low. Yep, it's a new closing low. Okay, it's holding up and it's not really trying to break to the downside, but we are at a new closing low. It isn't a bearish trend. How can I be calling for a basing bottoming formation? Well, we start looking at other indicators like the cash flow index is showing that we're seeing some accumulation in the US markets. We have the valuations or the commodity gold index indicating that we're in a moderate uptrend. We have the FANGS index reaching an extreme low, which has historically been a very solid bottom. We're looking to see if this turns into a major bottom here the next couple of weeks. We see gold is starting to shift direction, which is a pretty good sign that, remember, we can have gold moving up and the stock market moving up at the same time, just like we had through 2003, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, before the uh, global financial crisis. We had gold m moving up almost 300% higher, um, while the markets moved up about 60, 65% higher. 
after the 2001 uh, uh, um, uh, terrorist attack and dot-com bubble. So we can have gold in the stock market moving higher at the same time. And you can see the global smart cash index is putting in a couple of nice little white bars indicating we're trying to build some support here, maybe looking at foreign capital uh, shifting into global markets off of these deep, deep lows, maybe reverse, reverting back to this upside. Uh, we also have the U.S. stock market index. This is, again, from a week ago. It's an older one, but uh, you can see here we've seen it move back up to the upside. You can see we're holding up here near these extreme lows. This is, again, a, I got to do the math here. This is a 2.0 standard deviation uh, uh, low here. Very important to understand that this low here that we touched on matches this COVID high back here. So we're looking at extreme, um, extreme pullback in this custom U.S. market index and a nice little rally phase out of that. If we were to see a reversion, we'd be looking at areas up here around 1100, 1125, almost extending this kind of a, a purple or orangish color line out right over here, 1110, 1125. That would be a reversion area and that would be about a, a 10 to 20% move higher, maybe a little higher, maybe up in 1170. And then of course, as we move over here, we get to the vol volatility index, which is moving higher. And the volatility index moving higher indicates that we're starting to see some accumulation. You see here, this is very important to understand that we're starting to see some accumulation. We're starting to see some upward biasing taking place right over here. Maybe like this, maybe like this, we would need to see some bigger moves up above 10. It's really important that as we base and bottom, we get this basing, accumulation, upward trending. And then as soon as we get above 10 here, like this, this moves us back into more solidly bullish biased. And at this point, these downward trends here become pullbacks in a bullish trend. Whereas when we're below six here, like right here, these moves become pullbacks in a bearish trend. So where we're at right now, this becomes a pullback in a bearish trend. This becomes a pullback in a bearish trend right here up until here. 10 means we're now moving up in, into a bullish bias and we're starting to see a pullback in a potential bullish trend. Soon as we got back down here, the pullback had ended and we were looking for a downward cycle trend. Now we're in a pullback in a bearish trend. We need to see it get above nine, nine and a half, ten, 10. And then that would move us into more bullish biasing. So understand that we're looking very, very strongly at a reversion rally phase if this continues. We'll see how it plays out, guys. Um, remember, this week we have more data coming out, more jobs market data, more housing data, um, more consumer data, and of course the elections. And I think the elections are a wild card. It, depending on what happens, depending on the outcome of these elections and, and what actually transpires, we could see quite a bit of volatility in the market and we could see a sudden shift of how capital is deployed. Kind of like what happened after 2017. Let me try to find, uh, I guess it's the easiest to go back here. After 2017, we had a massive shift in how uh, the globe perceived uh, economic activity. Okay, so now you can understand that this was a different world. The Fed was in quantitative easing mode. And of course, they tried to raise rates through here. Uh, but you can see how we went from zero to almost 55%. That's a big move, folks. 55% rally in the global markets and a 25-30% rally in the U.S. markets just from a shift in political landscape. Now, could we see something like that happen again here? Yeah, we could. I'm not saying it's unfathomable. It is possible. Um, what we will see is how this plays out, but be prepared that we're looking like we're trying to find a base or bottom. We're trying to hammer out activity in the global markets. It looks like capital starting to nibble away at these underpriced global assets and global stock markets and ETF funds. And we may see the U.S. markets rally 20, 25, 30, 40%, where we may see the, uh, the actual foreign markets rally 25, 30, 40% as well, maybe even higher. So we just need to stay cautious, wait for our opportunity in the markets, and it looks like it's coming. 
matter of maybe 60, 65 days away while we protect ourselves with and watch what happens with gold and silver. Boy, this next week could be really big for gold and silver. I mean, extremely volatile. Election periods are always volatile for gold and silver. I remember the uh, 2016 election. Um, overnight, gold had like a, a, I'm guessing, but I think it was about a 15% range. It was just huge. All right, guys, on to the uh, 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 rotational modeling index uh, data and the real estate data before we, I work on the next video.